political consultant Tom Serafin, North Central College political science professor Stephen Caliendo, and the controller of the state of Illinois, Susana Mendoza. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Susana, we're going to start with you because as we're waiting for the numbers to come in, you were one of many Illinoisans who were pounding the pavement in the battleground states over the last month or so. Tell us what that was like and what did that involve? Yes, well, I mean, I'm going to predict that Illinois is going to come in big today for Kamala Harris. So a better use <laughs> of so brave. Yes. I'm so brave. <laughs> yes. A bigger and better use of my time was to be in those swing states. I was in uh, Nevada as an example, in Las Vegas specifically. Uh, most recently, I uh, just got back from Michigan. That was my second bus tour that I took and led to Michigan. Um, and the ones before that, also just recently in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, soon after President and Trump was there and you know Kamala Harris was there so like they're going back and forth and it's it's truly a battleground but the important thing isn't so much going to rallies it's talking to voters at the door because and you were knocking the, on doors. yes I was knocking on doors and what so, did you find so I well it was very positive for us um, truthfully in Nevada it was a little tougher I felt like Nevada uh, the big issues that people were talking to me about that they were undecided and were areas of concern for them were the border um, in terms of border policies and wanting to see tougher border policies, even from our party, and the economy, right? And so, like, for me, being able to be there and talk to them as to uh, why our candidate is actually better for the economy long term, how the top economists in our nation have said that the economy would be better under Kamala Harris than under Donald Trump, and try to explain to them that, you know, Donald Trump really did do a masterful job of taking credit for a great economy, but it was Barack Obama's economy that he inherited. And now Joe Biden, in fact, inherited a disastrous economy that the helm of that economy was Donald Trump. And so it takes time to fix these things. And so being at the doors, listening to what voters' concerns are, and then trying to walk them through why it is that I believe that our candidate is the candidate who really cares about those issues and will fight for them, well, that's where you can turn an undecided into a decided for Kim. Okay, for so Kamala. let's talk about this, Professor and Tom. Uh, she was talking about Nevada was being was a, a tough one. How Is that, that a surprise? Uh, well, yeah. How about the, about the no tax on tips? Did they mention oh, yeah, that yeah, to you? Yeah. They did, yeah, but yeah. Uh, they knew that Kamala was for it too, so it really wasn't an issue. Like some people said, well, he he said it first. I'm like, yeah, but the good thing is that she <laughs> believes that too, so that's like a non-issue. Let's talk about those issues where there is a so difference. So on, uh, on the economy, yeah. was uh, no jobs or what specific? on the economy were they working, working, worried about? So they said that they felt that they had more money in their pocket when Donald Trump was president. And so that things just cost more money today. Obviously, inflation is an Killer. issue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, inflation just happened in the United States. It was a worldwide inflation. And President uh, Biden and Vice President Harris have a plan to bring down the cost of groceries, to really try to, you know, bring down the cost of prescription drugs. They don't just talk about it, they're actually doing it. And so that's the thing. It's trying to recover from the pandemic and then have an eye on making the average person's life better, not just those at the very, very top. But well, you know, we talk about the economy. I think that is something I think we can all agree across the board that is a concern for, for sure. every single American. And some would disagree with what you're saying in regards to the economy and how they feel about their pocketbook right now. As we wait to see these numbers come back in, Professor, what are you looking for? Who needs to be coming out tonight for either side to get this advantage? Yeah, of course, I'm, I'm most interested in, in seeing uh, when these East Coast swing states. I'm thinking about Georgia, North Carolina, and then, of course, we're going to get Pennsylvania, too. I don't know how quickly the votes are going to get counted in Pennsylvania because of the rules they have about when they can count the mail-in votes. The problem with Georgia is I was hoping we'd get an early, early indication of Georgia, but there were bomb threats in some of the counties, uh, in the suburban counties around, uh, around Atlanta. And as a result, they're going to keep the polls open a lot later. So it may be a long time until we get those. We also got the U.S. House. We have to, I mean, very close. We're talking yes. about a couple of seats there in the U.S. Senate that we have to be worried about. Again, because some of those are going to be on the West Coast, we're not going to know those until later. But lots of big stuff on the national front. It's one of sure. these. It it's is. going to be it's a an nail-biter. Yes. Sure. And, and uh, Tom, you're, you, you, you're a numbers man, I always say about you. And so you've been watching closely. You've been talking to some people who've been out on location. What are you feeling right now? What's, what's the word? 
Well, you know, the, the attitude is that it looks like there's a deeper well of, of support for Donald Trump only because of some of the early voting in Pennsylvania four years ago. Granted, it was 20 right at the beginning of COVID. You had 1.600,000, 1,600,000 voters out. Mm -hmm. Today, you only had 1 million voters come out that were Democrats. And then you had 590 and 580, about the same number of Republicans. So the Democrats have to make up today 400,000 votes on election day, which is uh, that's a tough, that's a tough hike. And why is that? That's right. It's because they vote early yes. and they expected a larger vote earlier. Republicans usually vote on election day. This is the first year where they really have made an effort to get the vote out early. The Republicans, and of course, Donald Trump has done that with a lot of what would they call them, contractors and others, not really party people. Yeah, it was Charlie so, Kirk, right? Yeah, right. So, for the students and, and, and Elon, Elon Musk, Musk, right? And so, yeah. how do you do that, and yeah. can you do it well enough? You know. You go no door to door. You ask people. You did that in Michigan. You did that in Wisconsin. You did in Pennsylvania. That's the big difference in how you go about it. Mm -hmm. We're going to know later, maybe an hour. An the hour one and thing, half. Tom, though, that's different this year is that in <clears throat> 2020, Donald Trump and the Republicans were telling everybody, "Do not vote early. Do not vote right. by mail. That's that it's been corrupt. A big it's fixed or whatever." Right. That they're not doing that now. The numbers you gave in Pennsylvania, though, are telling because yeah. those aren't percentages; those are raw numbers. And yeah. so, when you talk about the number to make up, that's going to be important. That's okay, I'm going to put point. you on hold now because we're going to wait for the numbers to come back, and then they're going to come back to us, and we're going to look at, take a look at what we're seeing, and uh, maybe if how you predictions, how you've been feeling about how things are going to turn out, are actually going to happen that way. This is going to be a very interesting night. Let's head it back over to the anchor desk and Scott.